But don't you agree that the noise level, we wouldn't be able to visit with people and talk. So it yeah. just made sense. Once I heard you doing just acoustic music in that building, I kind of said, I think this makes sense. It'll be more better. Yeah, it'll be more better. More yeah. better. I love that. Yeah. Today we're going to talk the past, the present, and the future. And um, a few weeks ago, I asked you, the next time you're here to visit, would you bring me three items that are very important to you? And because I had been through his house and kind of looked at how he likes things, I kind of guessed at what he would bring. I got one out of three right because I thought you might bring something about your dad's military uniform. It was, was too big and <laughs> I couldn't, it's a big old thing. Mannequin, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, and uh, the gun, I thought about it, but it's just so big. Yeah, yeah. But this is Independence Day, the 4th of July. America was founded and, and thank God, has, has been successful because of men like your daddy who went to war and who protected our country and continue to protect our country today. We are looking at a very different America, and on one of your songs you write about America's in trouble. One of the last lines, is it... I've been wrong before? Yes. Yes. And how do you feel about what's happening in America today? It's worse now than it was when I wrote the song. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It is very scary. Um, I pumped gas yesterday and a little violent attitude came over my head as it hit $117. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I know. Yeah. And then you go to the grocery store and you used to buy a loaf of bread for 89 cents and it's now 369 yeah. for a loaf of bread. Yeah. The farmer isn't getting rich. Nobody's getting rich except somebody, somebody somewhere. This is planned to take us down a little bit? I believe so. I believe it is. I believe it is and it's very scary. So today we want to have good things from the past. Now, Dwight, will you tell me why you chose the items you chose to bring today? Yes, I chose three items. One of them is our old wash pan. Yes, I love that. Right here. Yeah. What a, Let me see that. Okay. That is so cool. This was sitting Stainless on Stainless steel. Yeah, this is the one I guessed because it was sitting on your kitchen table with fruit in it. Yep. And I said that has to have a message oh, somewhere. Oh, it has a big background. Tell me what it is. A guy named Ed Dotson. Some of you people watching will know Ed Dotson. He was an old character we had around here forever and a day. And uh, my mother always told me the story. Ed Dotson gave her this wash pan, we called it the wash pan, in 1950. Wow. And uh, now it's at my house and it'll be there till whenever. Yep, yep. And uh, I've seen my mommy walk in many times with this heaped up with blackberries, <laughs> picking them blackberries in this. And it had 10,000 uses around the house. And again, it was the wash pan. Yep, yep. Okay. For when you took those Saturday afternoon, evening washes That's before right. getting ready for church. I remember <clears> this <throat> sitting on the old wood heater, getting some water hot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, what memories. And uh, yep. yeah, the blackberries, uh, the everything really. Now the other item really surprised me because I don't think about Mickey Mouse being that old, but you got that Mickey Mouse when yeah. you were eight months old? Mickey. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was about eight months old. Uh, actually, my daddy got me this for Christmas, 1956. That's the year I was born in February. And I have slept with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I slept with this fella every night. Could not go to sleep without this in the bed with me. Probably till I was 12. I, I, was I love it. Time. I love it. I love Mickey it. Mickey Mouse, yeah. Yeah, that is so funny. He used and to make a little squeaky Do you sound. know where your daddy purchased that? I don't exactly, but I sure do have a good assumption that it might be at Lay's mm -hmm. Dime Store. There you go. There uh, you go. There across from the pool room back in the day. Oh, yeah. Mickey, he's yeah. been around yeah. forever. And you know, Mickey looks a little different today. They kind of redesigned yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. 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 Later on, cool. I got a knife for Christmas. Uh huh. So Mickey has a little cut place on his ear right uh -oh. here, but you can't tell it. Uh oh. <laughs> you can't tell uh oh. It. Yeah, boy, me and this guy go way back. Yeah, to eight months old. Now, yeah. tell me about the knife you brought. The knife is uh, the old house where they brought me home from Watkins Memorial Hospital. In, in Dalton? No, right here in Ellijay. Oh, here, okay. In uh, 1956. 
they brought me, when I was born, they brought me home to this old house. And in that old house, not long before my mom passed away, she was showing me this knife. What a story, okay? Get ready, folks. And she said, I found this knife. It was down in a crack in the floor of that old house where we used to live there in Pumpkin Center. And I thought, I'll be darned. I got to looking at it. This is a USA knife, stainless steel, real good quality knife. So she, she had kept it all those years. Then she gave it to me not too long before she died. And guess what I did? I took it to Tim Parker, and he put me some new handles on this knife. And it's going to be around as long as I'm around. It which, is. Uh, you know, we don't know. But uh, Is the old house still there? No, no. no. Lord, no, it's been gone forever. No. Yeah. But I liked to fell over when my mom told me. She, she, pulled, she pried it out of a crack in the floor. It had been in that crack. So who knows how long it had been there. But mm -hmm. she did that in 1956. Wow. Wow, yeah. that is cool. And that if you don't cool. remember Tim Parker, you don't remember the best banjo player that ever walked these parts. And is he the gentleman who did all the knives you showed me? He did, yeah. Oh I got gosh. a lot of his knives. Oh, oh. He did these handles. I, he told me An what they artist. were, some kind of bone, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, yeah, Tim Parker, we could talk all day and not say enough about him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I tried to play some with Tim, used to. Lord, he was so far over my head, I... He was the best banjo player ever, okay? And he won the championships. He, he'd go to the Nationals, I don't know how many times. He, he said when, every time he'd go to the Nationals, some 14-year-old kid would beat him. Oh, no. <laughs> so I don't know. It was fun to hear him tell that. But oh, Lord. Boy, he was good, and, and he, was, he was a real artist. He, he did these knives, and this knife he did, and how precious. How long has he precious. been gone? Gosh, uh, Tim probably died, I don't know, but I'm thinking... 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. Five or seven, seven yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Well, what a great memory. What a story. <clears throat> now, can we tell what I brought? We can. What did you bring to show I us brought, today? It was so weird because we have, we are so crazy. Together, we make all these decisions about stuff, and they usually g haul. Most of the time, we g haul. And when we first met, we were talking about stuff that made sense because we liked this, we liked this, we liked this. And when you told me your favorite toy was a Mickey, and I said, wait till you see what I'm bringing. <laughs> this is my daughter Angela's doll. The doll's name is Christy. And this is the dress that wow. Angela wore 52 years ago. This was Angela's dress when she was eight months old. So when you said, I'm going to bring my Mickey, I said, well, you just watch and see what I bring. <laughs> and so, of course, surprise, surprise, yeah, we yeah. both liked Mickey. I also brought something because I can remember as a mom buying these little shoes for my firstborn beautiful, beautiful child. These are Angela's tennis shoes. And for everybody who knows and loved my daughter, y'all know what they mean to me. Um, when she died, the funeral home was full of our viewers, and the fun funeral home was full of, you're hugging me, and you're loving me, and you're getting me through the loss of my child. So I had to include Angela's little tennis shoes. Precious. But the most precious thing, this, and I opened it and like, let Dwight smell it, and I started crying. Yeah. And tears were just, Bleh. This is my precious grandmother, Laura Trammell Gilreath, Cotillion Avon. Now, it was in perfect condition. Oh, my God, it smells just like my granny until the tornado destroyed our business. And the tornado that hit on Palm Sunday destroyed our <coughs> business, tore up our home. This was in a display case in my office that was destroyed by the tornado. It had the original label on it, and it was in mint condition. When we found it, it was laying in water after the tornado and we were going through debris and I found this. So a miracle happened, it didn't get broken. It still smells exactly like my granny and it says very clearly on the bottom, Avon 1951. Wow. So how cool is that? But I cheated today. I told him to bring three items, I brought four. Imagine. Yeah, and, I, and it's because it's the Mr. L. J. show and I wanted to get a little air time. So. Yeah. So, this is something that is very, very precious to me, and um, not a lot of y'all know, and not many people have ever heard the whole story, but this was my bracelet when I was born. I was born at Downey Hospital in Gainesville, Georgia, in Hall County. 
I cost $25 and my Aunt Louise paid for my birth. This doesn't say Dobbs, which is my maiden name. It says Douglas and um, it says Douglas because my mom was a single mom in a home for unwed mothers and she was gonna give me away. My father wanted her to have an abortion and abortions were illegal then, but he had set it up and paid somebody $500 to have me aborted. My mother chose to flee and take her unborn child. And so she went to a home for unwed mothers. And rather than coming home and facing the fact that she was gonna have an illegitimate child, she lied and told my grandmother that she had married somebody whose last name was Douglas. So my birth name was Douglas. It was never really my name. But mother wanted to do this. Mother fought to keep her child. And um, I'm forever grateful that she did. It was a choice she made. And we have just seen Roe versus Wade overturned. A lot of people are crazy screaming about it. A lot of people are praying and thankful about it. I'm thankful that my mother chose life for me. Absolutely. And I'm, cho I'm, I'm so honored that all of my life, I never doubted how much my mother loved me. Right. And that's, that is a part of life. And, and so this little bracelet, out of everything I have, this is the most important thing because it means that my mother chose my life. So yes. now, <clears throat> today's program, <clears throat> the past, the present, and the future, you have been doing music forever. We've talked about it in the past. 1961. Crazy, crazy. Oh, can crazy. I show them how I learned my first song? Yes, yes. Okay. Mom set me up on the bed. Yes. Laid the guitar over my lap. I was five. <coughs> mm -hmm. And she took my little thumb and showed me how to do this. Oh, my gosh. Name that tune. What is that tune? Chewing Chawing Gun. <laughs> that is crazy. Took my gal to church last night. I tell you what she done. She walked right up in the preacher's face and chewed her chaw and gum. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a precious memory. What a precious memory. We're going to do a song that made him Mr. Ella J. And honestly, y'all know the story. I had never heard this song. I've been in TV and Ella J 16 years and I'd never heard this song. But anyway, you've heard it now. And we're going to go to that song and then a commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk a lot about music. We're going to talk a lot about life. And we're going to share a little bit of personal things about both, both of us that a lot of you don't know. And um, it's really strange because it's our way of getting personal with you because we want you to get personal with us and show up on Monday afternoon at 5 o'clock front and center, right in front of the hardware store here in LJ, and that man is going to be picking and grinning. I'm going to be cooking and smiling, and we're just going to have a great time with y'all. It's, it's not going to be too loud. It's not going to drive you out in a parking exactly. lot. Exactly. You're going to be able to understand what I'm saying and everything. That's why I made the brutal decision to not do the whole band. I just want the good music, and I think it was a great decision. And I've been hearing from some of my viewers who've said, Yes, that's what we wanted. We want his music, him, live. That's what we want. So that's what you're going to get. We're going to take this commercial break, and you're going to get to hear the whole song about Ella J. And then when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about his writing, a little bit about his do's and don'ts, and a little bit about my do's and don'ts. We'll be back shortly. What's doing out there? Welcome to Ella J. That's with a J. About 90 miles north of Atlanta, where the Kusawati lay. They come out of the hills to pay their telephone bills in a town called Ella J. When the mayor drove a shiny 62 Corvette. Slim was in a cruiser with a Cobra jet. What you see is exactly what you get if you come to Ella J. Hey, Ella J, a mighty fine place to be. Ella J, good enough for you.
the middle of town and late in the evening when the sun goes down you can drive through and hear the happy sounds of the folks in L.A.J. Now way back in the summer of 73 the Red Dot parking lot was the place to be but you could get more than what you bargained for Back in those days in Ella J. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Ella J. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. High-speed Wi-Fi. 
not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. take you right now to Mr. Sanford because he's showing me something that I didn't know could happen. Tell me what happens with an airplane. An airplane? They fly and a lot. They do? Yeah. You don't like to fly, do you? You've lost me. No, I've <laughs> never been on an airplane. Well, okay, I have one of those little teeny ones and that ain't going to happen again. What are you going to do with your hands to show people? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's more about life yeah, it and is. time. It I'll is. show you this. Ladies and gentlemen, time <laughs> flies, but you are the pilot. That's right. That's right. If you get on an airplane, you have no control. You have to sit there until that pilot decides to land. But in life, you are in control. Yes. You are in control. Life no. is what it is, folks. And you make Plum it. Plumb up until the time where you get off your hump and you change it. That's it. That's it. I love that. Okay, when we first met, I kind of went over some particulars, and, and I know um, a lot of no's in your life. It was no, no, no. And you said like, I got to... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of no's, no. yeah. <laughs> no, I got no, some no, no. no's. Here we go, okay. But I don't think that's what you no. meant, right? Yeah. Okay, I said, do you like to? And he said, no. And I said, do you like to? No. Have do you, you like ever? To? Have you ever? Okay, Dwight, have you ever gone fishing? I've never been fishing in my life. Dwight, you ever been hunting? Not in this life I have never been hunting. Dwight, have you ever failed a drug test after driving a school bus 41 years? I passed every single one of them <laughs> in spite of that guy that said, well, I know for a fact you used to be on drugs. <laughs> and you never were. No. Okay, no alcohol. No alcohol. N well, I sipped on it one time in 1970. Okay. First and last. Okay. You don't like to travel. You like to be within your little whatever. When I go somewhere, I, I rarely get out of Gilmer County until I wish I was back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. RVing. I'm again it. <laughs> I Movies. You think they're a waste of I time? I can't sit still long enough to watch a movie. <laughs> Tobacco. Oh, no. Shoot, nasty. <laughs> no, never touch that, period. Okay, my weakness in my whole life is jet skis. I love to jet ski, and I said, have you ever jet skied? And hey, you said, I've well, never even been on a out. bus. Check yes. this out. With a jet. <laughs> How do you like them apples? Like Who do you suppose apples? they're calling? <laughs> anyway. So, you've never been on a jet ski? No, but it sounds, that actually sounds like fun. It is fun. It yeah. is a whole lot of fun. It is, and Joe Kelly McCutcheon will tell you the story about me and the jet yeah. ski. It was wild. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's, there's so much good in life that you do. And last night I was, you know, thinking about my friends are usually older than me. And I used to drive the widow wagon, and I drove a bunch of little old ladies around. We went places. Yeah. I was the baby widow because I became a widow at 50. So... It's very different when you're the young one, but you listen to your older friends, and you have a group of older friends that you trust, and you admire, and you learn from. Uh, I was going to work on not saying absolutely so much. I've been looking at my shows, <laughs> and I say absolutely every five seconds, so I'm going to try to cut back on some of that. But yes, I do have older friends, yeah. and I, I, I absolutely cherish them. They're they're. You, you can learn from those guys. Well, I was watching. And they're fun. They're just fun. They're, they're crazy fun. Yeah. I was watching Vic, and then I was watching Ed, and I was kind of comparing. They're very different gentlemen, aren't they? Yeah. Very different. Very different. Yeah, they are different. And, and in more ways than one, they're very different politically. They're very different in a lot of ways, but you admire both of them. I believe, I actually believe, I am, I'm already pretty old, actually, period. <laughs> and I think I've always been an old soul. I just, yeah. I like 
I like the stories. I like the talk. I like the stuff. Yep, yep. Old people are great. And walking into your home, you can see that you cherish, and that's why I threw this challenge to you to bring something that you cherish, and you chose old items. Heck yeah. You know, you didn't yeah. go through there and get your prettiest something or your biggest something or your most expensive guitar. You chose keepsakes that mean something yep. to you. Yep. And I think that says the kind of man you are. Now, the music is not the kind of man I think you are. Because you do music that is like over the top wild, over the top weird, and then you go back to the basics of country. You go everywhere with the music. And you said a while ago you were going to do Dr. Hook and the Medicine Man. I'm like, are you kidding me? I almost. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. You know. Pretty versatile, I reckon. It's I've crazy. Been called worse, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've asked you today to give people a little preview of what the music will be like on Monday. Can we do that? Sure. What would you like to hear? Well, Norwegian Wood, can you yeah. do that? It'll be instrumental. It'll be instrumental. This is by the Fab Four. While we were on break, you went. we went live on Facebook and you did a Merle Haggard, but we need another Merle Haggard because he's one of those that you really nail him. Is it because you admire him that much? You told me you've seen him in concert 28 times. 28 times. 28 times. <laughs> Was he your number one guy? Country? Boy, he, I'm like Vic said, he, he was close. If, if not number one, he's yeah. close. That Hank Williams. Yes. Yes. And, and him go way back. Yeah. I think Hank was actually Merle's. <laughs> but, yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. And uh, Merle, uh, he he was. Uh, you know, some people don't know this, but Johnny Cash was never in prison. Merle was. Yes, he was. <laughs> he was. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote that song and told the truth. He turned 21 in prison. Yeah, doing life without parole. He, yeah. Yeah. Who was it? Ronald? Did Ronald? Who? No. Who? Jerry Brown? Somebody pardoned him. The governor. Was it Ronald Reagan? The governor. No, I, I can't. I remember it was the governor of California. It yeah. was either Jerry yeah. Brown or, or Ronald Reagan. Right. And got him out of there. And got boy, him out. Yeah. What, and his life changed. Yeah. Well, you did the song the other day about Mama's prayers. Oh, mm -hmm. That's so touching. You like that? I was watching that last night, and I was like, that is just that. I wish I would have had my mic in place that I know. Day. That says it all. <laughs> whatever. That says it all. Well, would it hurt your feelings if I ask you to do it again? Just do it again? I'd love to do it again, song. and this time it'll sound much yes, better. Yes, it's such a good song. Because I had uh, lost my mic that day and did not realize it. Yeah, yeah. So here you go. Mama's prayers? Yeah, let's do that. Yep. <clears throat> One night, no, that's that's not how it starts. <laughs> we're having fun now. I love live this TV. is fun. We're yeah. having fun. Live we're getting TV. Here. <laughs> okay. Back when I was doing time, there's a night I can't forget. A madman with a knife in hand tried to kill me while I slept. But somehow the knife missed its mark. And I pin the raging man. Somehow my mama's prayers had worked again. One night while we were driving across the mighty Texas plains, a car pulled out with its headlights out, head on into our lane. As Dean Rose swerved to miss the car, I felt a mighty hand. Somehow my mama's prayers had worked again. Mama's prayers were always with me through the battlefields of life. She prayed for me. From the death house in San Quentin, he walked away a better man. Somehow, my mama's prayers had worked again. From the death. 
bath house in San Quentin. I walk away a better man. Somehow, my mama's prayers had worked again. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> Merle Haggard had it going on. He and, sure did. And, you know, <clears throat> when, when we think about his mama's prayers, did he write that song? He absolutely did. Merle Haggard wrote a train he load of songs. He wrote so many great songs. Yeah. Did he write Fight Inside of Me? He did. Can we do that one? Today? Today. <laughs> that would be a little difficult. Okay. <clears throat> but right. I'll do it anyway. How's that? <laughs> I know he could. Because <laughs> I know it's fun when I mess up. <laughs> now you hear this with the band and there's a bunch of racket going on, but uh, today if anybody messes up, I can't blame it on the drummer. <laughs> I hear people talking bad about the way we have to live here in this country Harping on the wars we fight, rapping about the way things ought to be Well, I don't mind them switching sides and standing up for things they believe in How cool is that? Merle Haggard, there you go. The man, the music, the memories, yeah. and God, what kind of memories did he, he leave He signed, us? or I think he signed. His wife took my guitar on his bus, uh -huh. and it came back, said Merle Haggard on it, on the pit guard, wow. on the tough dog telly that I have. Oh, yeah. I reckon he signed it. You were going to bring it today. Somebody signed it. <laughs> yeah, you were going to bring it today, and you did, and yeah. yay. Well, we want to encourage people to come out on Monday, and they're going to hear the man and the music. And I want to talk a little bit about this. I nicknamed you Mr. Ella J, and I thought it was pretty funny. And then he bought this tag that's really pretty funny, and everybody <laughs> loves it. And I realized that you are Mr. Ella J truly because you love this community, you love this town, I and do. you love writing about it. No place I'd rather be. Now, I'm going to go through some of the songs, and I want to, I want to share with you how I feel about this music. Because okay. Welcome to LJ. Fun, love it. I, I think it should be playing everywhere in town. That's, Told the truth and made it rhyme. Yes, that is my goal: is to have it playing as people walking around the streets it in town. It should be. It should be. It should be. But then I love Southern City Lights. Now, tell me about writing that one. It's written about the old days back when uh, I had a '55 Ford. Not so sure about that two-dollar bill. I probably didn't have one of them. But uh. We would all get together, we'd get our showers and our bath or whatever I had, probably right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and go into town 
And uh, I don't know, we'd go down to the pool room, and back in those days, those, there were there some high-level high players would play pool in there, mm -hmm. and we'd go watch them. I, was one of, I would sit on the bench and watch those guys play pool. They played for money. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. And had to be real quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, they'd, they'd shoot pool and, uh, and uh, you know, go down to, going down to Jamie's. Uh, he run the pool room and watch him shoot a game of nine. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was fun, and uh, it was a thing to do. And uh, you know, I'd get my car all shined up, my grill would be clean. Remember me telling that I had an eight track in the dash of yeah. my machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Baby Blue. Tell me a little bit about that. Baby Blue. I wrote that one on duty again. I was on duty, and uh, I started writing uh, memories down, and then I come up with this. Uh, this melody, and then I, I love Badfinger, and so I named it Baby Blue and, and it's sort of like a tribute to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's all over now, Baby Blue. <clears throat> and then my anthem, I've Been Wrong Before. I've Been Wrong Before. Yeah, I told you about the, the pretty friend right. I had. That she came right. to the pawn shop and, and everything had fallen apart for her, and I, I took all of what she told me and turned it into, I added some stuff to it. Okay, I have a question. Why is it not being played on the radio? I don't know. Well, I think we should get on this because Vic and I were talking about this when you were out of the room the other day. This is a song that everybody can relate to because no matter where you are in life, something's going to get worse, I can guarantee you. Yeah. And something's going to come out okay and you're going to get some good news. Mm -hmm. And I want to I want to say good news is Miss Selena made it through her 11th chemo treatment. My sister is facing two biopsies. But we know who's in charge of that, and we're going to pray that she's going to be okay. Jen is back on chemo again, but she's going to be through that again. We know that something's going to go wrong again in our life, and then something's going to come out good in our life, because life is what is thrown at you. Yeah. But this song says that. Well, what I actually wrote that about was uh, how it gets bad, and you think, you know, the, the girl and, and everything had gone wrong, and... And right when you think, sometimes, I mean, when you think it can't get worse, well, it did. It does. It yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So don't, don't assume it won't get worse because yeah. it, it just might. Okay, Where I Dream. What's that about? My friend Randy Bell wrote that song. Yes. And that was... He I, died about yes. the time I made that. Yes, yes. And I just wanted to do it for his, to his memory. It's, it's a funny little song. It's just like him. Yeah, he yeah, He wrote little yeah. funny stuff. When you listen you know? to it, I was listening and I didn't know that Randy wrote it. And I was going, what? And I just kept I listening and I said, that doesn't sound like yeah. Dwight at all. So, yeah, well, okay. he wrote that. He, he okay. was a funny guy. I always writing funny stuff. Funny little place inside my head, yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah. like him. Okay, your little girl, you little girl. Met an ex-girlfriend one day, I won't say her name, but she has brunette hair and big <laughs> brown eyes. Yeah. She was driving a Pontiac Trent, uh, a Grand Am. <laughs> yeah. Across the bridge there at the Dairy Queen, I was on duty, and I met her, and I waved, and she didn't wave. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh. So there came, you there came a song. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'm your man. I'm your man. Made that up. Lord, I made that up. Okay. So no, no relation to anybody. Not, not really. Okay. Just, okay. Uh, just imagining things. And 16-piece band. Wrote that about the times that we spent around home. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we'd sing, you know, me and, me and the, my uh, brothers and mom and dad, mainly me and mom and dad, but we'd sing. They'd, they'd join in sometimes, the brothers would. And we'd sing songs. And, uh, and to, you know, uh, we were, I was just learning chords. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really a piano, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. don't tell that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just, yeah. just don't tell. Pretend that, that there's a piano, a piano there. Yeah. Yeah. There's no piano. It was this yeah. fella. And wow. uh, I, I just wrote it. Uh, you know, it, it was precious times, precious mm -hmm. singing. Mm -hmm. And I was just barely learning some chords on the guitar, but we'd sing our songs, you know. Mm -hmm. And to me, it sounded like a 16-piece band. There you go. There you go. Okay, now this one, Ella J. Apples, because I was in the trucking business. <laughs> I know about Ella J. Apples often yeah. come out of Washington State. <laughs> so we used to bring truckloads of apples in. Is that why that song is what it is? Yeah. Please don't hate me. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're good. Don't unfriend me. <laughs> I was pulling into town one evening, and I looked over, and there's, there's a crowd gathered up over in the bank in that parking lot over uh, next to the senior center. I looked, and it was Ellie Mae. <laughs> yeah. And uh, 
they were all, you know, it was cool. And I, I walked over there. I didn't go up to her, but it was Ellie Mae. And I said, I wonder if they told him, told her they grew those apples in Ella J. Yeah, yeah. And so you wrote a song. All right, come again. Okay, today we're ending today's program in a little bit with Jesus Call to Find One Home. And yeah. I've never asked you to do it live because you don't like to do it I live. I can't do it live. He can't do it live, but it is a song you wrote minutes after burying your precious mama. Actually, it was I was getting ready to go to the funeral. Okay. And uh, I was. it was time for me to walk out the door. We, I was going to her funeral. And uh, I was trying to get dressed, and this song kept doing this. You remember me telling you how they do this? Mm-hmm. And uh, it just came in so fast I wrote that song in 10 minutes or less and it rhymes every time and it tells exactly how it was in the day and how I held her hand and watched her fade away and uh, up at Erlanger and mm -hmm. uh, it's totally true mm -hmm. there's not a word in that song mm -hmm. that is not totally true mm -hmm. and when I listen to it it relates to everybody. I I can remember Thursday night before my mom passed on Monday holding her hand. Yeah. And I remember what her hand felt like. Mm -hmm. It's been 20 years, and I remember I the feeling know, yeah. of mama's hand. Yeah. And, and I think about that. We've all buried someone we love, and we remember that last moment yes, we're holding yes. their hand. So it's it's perfect, it, and we are going to end with that today. It tells all about how I used to I'd be playing music. I'd be out till 3.30 a.m. Not one time did I ever come in the house with all that equipment on the van and doing all this, it'd be 3.30, she'd always get out of the bed and talk to me about whatever. I could sit on the side of the bed and she would just talk to me uh, or she'd, get, she'd always get up and cook food, make some food, and I'd be starving to death. She'd come mm -hmm. in. Back in those days, we didn't go to the, uh, somewhere and eat after the show. We didn't have any money. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I had to hurry home and, and, and Mom would How always Mama cook up. me something to eat. and. Uh, <clears throat> and then night after night I'd sit by the bed we'd just sit there and talk and talk and talk she answered every prayer even if it's 3 a.m. Yep. it's true let's listen to the words every word yep. of it is totally dead on yep yep well we're going to end with that today but you know today is about you and the music and, and I hope we're encouraging you to come and hang out with us on Monday it's going to be fun number one it's air conditioned we're going to have food and seats and music and it's got the view of the fireworks and we've got the view of downtown and we're going to be giving away Dairy Queen coupons. You get a free Yummy. sausage biscuit or you get a free ice cream cone and we're going to give some, a bunch of those away that um, compliments of our local Dairy Queen. Yes. We might like the local Dairy Queen. We just do. A little I bit. eat there all <laughs> of the time. Just a little bit, okay. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to be giving those away so we want you to come and hang out with us. I chose some songs I'd love for you to share today, and one of them because so many people will be home. Fourth of July seems to be when people do come back home. Mm -hmm. Can we do John Denver, Take Me Home, Country Roads? Boy, maybe. You cool with that? Yeah. Okay. Here it is. You uh, think? I gotta get my. <laughs> I have to get my feet set for this one. <clears throat>
Awesome. Thank you very much. I love I love music on request. <laughs> I yeah, think I noticed so cool. that. I, I've been noticing that. <laughs> I think that's so cool. Okay, now you wanted to do one called Leader of the Band. And I think that you, when I when I watch you doing music, really the versatility just gets me because I'm like, you're so versatile. And I'm like, I like this and I like this and I like this, but I can't figure out how it all goes in your head at one time and you remember this. Because so far, <coughs> everything I throw don't. everything I throw at you though, You've done good, but you told me the other day I had requested a song for you to learn, and you said it's going to take me a while, and that shocked me to death. It takes me a while, but when I learn them, I know them. You know them. <laughs> you know them. Smoky Mountain Memories. Working on it. He's working on it. Yeah. But I was like, he knows a million songs, and he doesn't know Smoky Mountain Memories. So, But we're going to go to one now that you, you like, Leader of the Band. Can you do that one? Yeah, I'll do some of it. How's All right, that? a little bit. All yeah. right, here we go. <clears throat> this is a, excuse me, <clears throat> a finger picking kind of thing. An only child alone and wild, a cabinet maker's son, whose hands were meant for different work. And his heart was known to none He left his home and went his own And solitary way And gave to me a gift I know I never can repay A quiet man of music Denied a simpler fate Tried to be a soldier once, but his music wouldn't wait. He earned his love through discipline, a thundering velvet hand. His gentle means of sculpting souls took me years to understand. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, somebody that I love, and I remember at a concert you did in Ringgold, I got to hear you do Jim Croce. Yeah. Loved him. He left here too soon. Boy, Jim Croce. He was amazing. Whoa. Was it a plane crash? Yeah. yeah. Plane crash, yeah. So left the airport, called his wife, said, I'm, I'm coming home after something. So I think he had a show or something to do, and then coming home. Pulled out of the airport, come just a little ways off the ground. And the plane turned upside down and mm. sat down on the runway. Yep, yep. Sad, sad day. Nobody sad knows Sad day why. for music, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Croce. And you know what's weird? When I was young, back in those days, I didn't like Jim Croce. <gasps> you didn't? No. I always liked no, him. That wasn't Credence Clearwater. It wasn't <laughs> Leonard Skinner. And I, but now I you worship love Jim Croce. There it's you go. Work. So it's it's 11:52. So can we end with Jim Croce? It means we're going to be t short on two songs that we wanted to do, but we might do them for Facebook after we finish. Who the knows? Show. All right, here we yeah. go. Yeah. Uptown got its hustlers. The Bowery got its bums. 42nd Street got Big Jim Walker. He's a pool shooting son of a gun. Yeah, he's big and dumb as a man can come. And he's stronger than a country house. And when the bad folks all get together at night, you know they all call Big Jim Boss just because. But they say you don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't spit into the wind. You don't pull the mask off the whole long ranger and you don't mess around with you. From out of South Alabama come a country boy said he was looking for a gin man named Jim. He's a pool shooting boy, my name is Willie McCoy, but down home they call me Slim. Yeah, he was looking for the gang of 42nd Street driving a drop top Cadillac. And last week he took all my money and he may sound funny, but he came to get my money back. Big Jim found out 
That, that is a Dwight Sanford mini concert. Okay, we have got to leave y'all now. We don't want to, but we have got to end today with Jesus Called, A Find One Home, written by Dwight in honor of his mama. Please join us on the 4th of July, 5 p.m., right across the street from Ace Hardware here in Ella J. We can't wait to see you. We can't wait to hang out with you, and we want to spend some time with you. I'm going to say from Ella J., I'm Sherry. You're, what's your name? Dwight Sanford. Or Mr. Ella J. We'll Either see way. you again soon, and we hope to see you on the 4th of July. Here we go. Jesus called to find one home. Someone with trouble singing sweet, sweet harmony. She'll help them on the part just the way she used to be. And if someone needs a friend just to sit and talk with them, she'll answer. It's 3 a.m. Yes, I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight. They're gathered in on heaven's shining shore.
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger,